computer. Here we go. Uh, sorry, I have to put my glasses on correctly. Okay, we're recording now. <laughs> okay, uh, here we are. And here is me, Vance Stevens. And I think this is, do you remember? It's Learning Together episode 451, I think. Wow. And maybe the 10th Talon uh, event. And Carla Arena is here with us. Susanna Can Canello, I'm just admitting to the room. And Tara was just asking me what you're going to talk about, Carla. <laughs> well, um, we've been, uh, for two weeks, three weeks now, we've been devising uh, and designing, really, um, a program, content for students, to get, like, to the students from K to 9. So, K1 to K9, and um, it's been a huge challenge because we had to... Uh, find specialist teachers in the subject area. So we are, we are designing this content for eight weeks for each level, each year. Mm -hmm. And well, it's been a huge challenge, but uh, really fun and we are learning a lot from it. And imagine that we have to, we are going to provide this to school districts in all over Brazil. So if any school district, any teacher, any director of a school, a principal wants to have this content, they can have it and they can just request. And we are gonna have two platforms for them to use. They mm -hmm. can either get everything in Google Classroom because then they can just copy everything to their systems or or even more accessible. We are gonna have like a Google Sites and we are have the whole experience all together. Nice. The main idea there, so the idea is really to help teachers uh, because they have to worry so much about so many things right now, like the technical part of being online, um, everything. So the idea is to relieve a little bit the burden of the content part itself. And we designed something totally unique because it's not like uh, the kids will have a class or a lesson plan for, from us. It's like they're really going to have learning experiences in different ways, different subjects. And that's the exciting part of it. It's been a challenge to design that with teachers because even the teachers that we selected we all have this framework of um, really uh, designing a lesson plan like for the student and it's totally different we need to deal with contexts in which the kids don't have internet access so connectivity is an issue here in brazil a big big i think all over the world we mm -hmm. have this kind of situation so uh, we are designing these uh, capsules, I'm calling it learning capsules, uh, that um, they can be either done online, and if they can, of cor course, there is much more enrichment, but they can also be done totally offline. So the kids mm -hmm. will uh, receive that through different ways, like, for example, in Brazil, WhatsApp is huge. So one way that they can get this content is they can have like the whole week uh, um, all set for them or maybe they can have just the day the learning experiences for the day on a PDF through their WhatsApp group and then the teachers will decide the best way to deliver the content for them and well that's it if you have any questions I'm really open and I can Carla, also share. who's, who's yes. funding that oh, who's funding that's a good that question the project is called Simplifica, which is simplify in Portuguese. Mm -hmm, right. And uh, there is an investment fund, uh, international and national. So it's called Imaginable Futures. It's the international mm -hmm. fund. And the national one is all done through Lehman Foundation, which is huge also in Brazil, working with public the public school system. 
So this is how uh, they are doing it. There are many initiatives at the same time. This is just a, a small one. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many others connected to this ecosystem to help teachers and schools. So for example, besides this content art, another content art is uh, uh, connecting with YouTubers. And uh, these YouTubers, they are uh, creating playlists to help uh, teachers as well. Um, they also have another point, which is like uh, talking to all the TV stations in Brazil. So the next step is to have like uh, content delivered through the TV for the ones who don't have internet uh, connection. And well, I think these are the main, main points. And also they are giving, they, they have a, a group of, uh, they have an enterprise helping like the schools, like with all the technical implementation part, everything that mm -hmm. they need to run something for the kids at home. That's the idea. Nice. Yes. But it's a, and, it's a, a big group of teachers working on that, right? Well, not as big as it should be. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's never that big. Uh, how is the how how did we set up the the project? We have um, we have like a, a academic team, which is like we coordinate things. We are uh, what six people in the academic team, and then we have from uh, we have around. 25 teachers all together mm -hmm. it is huge because if you think like a publisher for example if they were to do something like that I think they would take more than a year <laughs> right so the idea is like in three weeks we have to have everything ready and even the um, all the technical part ready as yes? how how we can uh, how the the school districts will be able to uh, replicate this content uh, for teachers, for schools, all that. So we are working with the academic team. We have a designer which is doing, she's doing an amazing job with the design part and I can show you a little bit. And we also have a developer together with us. So uh, this part of the developer is really important because he helps us speed up things and and you know, prepare the, the infrastructure that we need to deliver all this content all over the country. Yeah. So that's the idea. Hmm. Maybe Great. I could share a bit with you. Let me see if I can uh, give you an idea here. Yeah, please do. Yes. Um, can you see my screen mm -hmm. here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'll start not from here, which seems a little dry, but I can start from here. Uh, when the when we had 24 hours to select the teachers and we had 2,000 teachers wow. uh, <laughs> um, who wanted to join us, but we could only have around 25 teachers. So like it was ridiculous compared to the uh, number of teachers who were willing to be part of this project. So we we open the form the selection uh, the submission on on a sunday morning on monday we had the group yeah we had to select and everything and then we had an onboarding for the designers yes those teachers the designers this is the uh, team that is working the the academic team and then we had this onboarding all set with the timeline of the project and all that. And we needed also a framework for the designers so they could design the learning experiences. And what we decided to do as we had eight weeks of work, we got the, the UNESCO uh, sustainable uh, objectives, uh, the development it's objectives of sustainable development yes mm -hmm. and then uh we got that and then we we put them all together we saw what makes sense to get like to be together so for example we have the like the the one and the 16 all together and then we have like living in communities um and then <clears throat> it sustainability the living things innovation 
uh, responsible consumption, health and, and uh, well-being, well-being, uh, the the world of work and uh, life projects. So we we first we had to design those themes, yeah, and then we decided to have something uh, based on a bit of everything. Bloom's taxonomy, neuroscience, and and Kolb's um, cycle of experiential learning, and also of course Dewey and constructivism and all that all together, and we made it something like for the teachers as a guideline. So uh, the idea was that they had to build this uh, this journey throughout the week in which they had five verbs: explore, uh, make, connect think and observe with no specific order. The, the only order, uh, the only thing that we needed to make sure, and, and that's where uh, we get this uh, crazy spreadsheet here, is that like for each subject, we would go through like on week one, for example, here, we would go through all the verbs. So we would explore the things in different ways. So observe, connect, explore, make, uh, think. And we would also make sure, and then we had like uh, our, develop, uh, our developer do all the magic in spreadsheets. We would make sure that all the verbs were more or less at the same point so that uh, one wouldn't be like, uh, being highlighted more than another one. So that was the idea. And then we did that through all the years. And we have all subjects. So we have here week one uh, in this line here, in this column, and then in the line going through weeks one to eight as well, we would do the same thing. So to make sure that there, there was a balance in terms of experience mm -hmm. for teachers in the sense that uh, the kids would have all the verbs, um, um, they would observe things in their houses, they would explore things and make things. So that was the idea of the learning experiences. And that's how we built it. And uh, from there, we, we really uh, had these guidelines for, for uh, the designers, the teachers that Designing and one big thing to help them see as an, a professional development uh, opportunity as well for them in terms of learning. And uh, uh, we haven't gotten their feedback, but I'm sure that uh, they will uh, say that. Well, they've been saying the Hangouts that uh, they've been learning a lot, even in terms of how to design a learning experience that doesn't look like something boring and you know mm. this is the challenge yes to make it something cool for for kids uh, but still inspiring and, and challenging and all that another thing that we are now worried about besides the whole uh, content and, and I can show you here uh, how it looks like for for the kids what they are going to get uh, one thing that we are going doing is designing guides for the teachers that will receive the, the this content for the schools, for the parents, and for the students. So we have different guides for each one of them. So this is the guide that we are designing. Samara, my, my business partner, partner is even in this doc here working on it. But uh, we are working here on, again, a guide for teachers in a way that um, it's also an opportunity for their professional development. So they're going to get this material, this content for the kids, but how can they profit from it in a very special way? So this is how we are doing it. We are, you know, giving our, the background in terms of theoretical background and you know the cycles of learning our months for the project how the content works everything hmm. trying to how can they adapt the material for their um, their context how can they use the material 
And then finally, this is how it will look like for the students. Yes, so they get, they can have it either on a Google Sites, like embedded the slides, or they will get it through PDFs with the whole week, or even with the, only with the day. And one special thing about it that we really consider was how to system, systematize learning. And we created something like a, their journey journal. So their logbook that they have to fill in for every experience that they have during the day. We also included in every day a moment for social emotional learning, uh, something fun, but at the same time, something that they could really profit from, they could talk, they could think about their emotions. And then, uh, then the, the, the experience starts, yeah? So for example, this is uh, day one, this is arts. So then they have the whole experience with arts. They have uh, a whole construction here and they have to do something. Um, and we also included in the whole material something uh, related, we were really worried about differentiation, like how can you personalize learning for each kid? So we had something like to explore more and then they had extra things here and every end of the day, they also had their uh, something specific for their learning journals. And in this case, we had different options for them. So for example, you can share a photo of the world that they had, the ideal world that they had to create. You can search for more info on the internet about some data that they explored. They can write a summary, they can make a video. So uh, digital things and non-digital things as well, totally offline as well. And they do it as they wish to really register everything that they've been doing because maybe when they get back to their schools, they, uh, even the teachers can see how they work during the period. It will really depend on the teacher how they are going to use this uh, learning blog. If the teacher doesn't want to work with that, it's okay, but still we have uh, all the directions and instructions for the team to do it uh, on their own. And, and that's the idea. Well, I think um, the main points of the project, of course, there are many details, but I think this is a big overview and we would be glad to answer any questions that you have. Carla, I have another question. Sorry, I've yes. been monopolizing the question no. time. <laughs> um, on, on what did you base yourselves to start something like this? <laughs> like uh, in the sense of uh, creating, imagining this? Right, or, uh, right. Oh, well, uh, we, uh, Lehman Foundation called us for a meeting and they said we have, we want to deliver content to the, to students to help teachers and schools because they are really disoriented. And we said, well, we can do it, but we really need, we don't have, we still don't have a framework or something to work with that. So mm -hmm. this is when we decided first that we needed to do something like if it were eight weeks, we needed to do something that they would have like, and, and it's around two, two hours a day. It's okay. like two learning experiences a day. So from this, uh, like from the premises of the, the project, we, we started designing uh, the idea. And then with the, the academic team, uh, well, the first time that they showed us something uh, like the, the, the core team, it was really lesson, a lesson plan. Like it was mm -hmm. really focused on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, with a traditional the mm -hmm. schedule, very, very traditional. Mm -hmm. And my main role is really to first deconstruct this mindset that all have. So I said, and if we didn't have any of this, where would you, where we, would we start? And from there, we started to iterate and 
consider different possibilities for the project. Nice. And then, of course, we have, you know, our background, our theoretical background. And then we, we got something from here, something from there. And we also, ah, something very important in the project, we created for the designers, the teachers, uh, personas of this uh, public that we would have in terms of students and in terms of teachers. And from there also, we could see that uh, the traditional way of, you know, doing things wouldn't work. And uh, that's where we uh, started from. And I think it was a bit of everyone. And also, Teresa, one thing very important in the project was in the first uh, week that the, the, the teachers had to design the experience, they did it all by themselves selves first. Mm -hmm. Why? Because then they could, um, you know, we could get a sense of what kind of experiences they were considering. And from okay. there, we really um, structured and uh, from there, we really understood how we should work. And only then we created the whole set, uh, the slide set for everyone to work on. So the first week they had to do it individually so we could see elements from each one of them that we could bring to the project. And then from week two on, when they started designing week two, then we already had all, all set in terms of framework. Uh, mm -hmm. How the day would look like, what were the elements and all that. So right. um, it, was, it was really interesting, the, the construction idea. Vince was asking about when we began the project. It's been like uh, two weeks and a half, Vince. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> I was one so it really two and a half weeks. That's amazing. Yes. So this, yes. this really came about as a as a it was driven by COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. So yes. before that, I mean, what you've done in two and a half weeks is amazing, really. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, when, when I'm listening to this, I'm thinking uh, you must have this must have been something from the. That's why I asked. You know, this must have been something that was in the works for some time, but. No, you're saying that uh, all of a sudden everyone has to go online, schools are closing, and you've come up with this. Yes, but it was, yes, it was just like that. We had a meeting on a Friday and uh, in the afternoon, no, on a Thursday or Friday, and then Friday night, uh, like the, the academic team is really part of our network here, people that I, we've worked with uh, and all that. So uh, I just sent a message on WhatsApp saying, uh, are you up for a hangout tonight? And it was Friday night. And I knew that the ones who would jump on a Friday night without knowing what it was about and would get into this hangout they were ready for the the challenge and that's what happened it was the whole group that i invited they were all there like 15 minutes later they didn't really know we didn't know what we were going to do really i just said we need to trust the process and we need to start from scratch there is nothing like that in brazil like uh, the way we design and uh, so that's it. And the group is working nonstop since then. Today's a holiday in Brazil. We are all working and, but I think it's gonna be amazing when it's ready with the kids, yeah? Right. And, uh, so that's the, the main thing. Another question, um, how mm -hmm. are you, I mean, this is like two and a half weeks old, so nobody, yes. not everybody in Brazil knows about this, right? How are you? No, no. How are you? You no. getting this across to the whole country, over Bolsonaro, of course. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't even mention that. Let's let's forget sorry, this part yeah, yeah. because <laughs> yeah, sorry. it's not like in the agenda here. But um, 
Yes, uh, one thing that we, we've been working on uh, parallel to the project is like uh, the designer that is working with us, she, she's an educator and she's also a journalist. So one thing is uh, like to, first we need to spread the word out and today we were just talking about that. We were even considering bringing students' voices about learning, this is one thing like spreading through social media, um, uh, this idea. And also Lehman Foundation is all over Brazil and they already work with school districts in Brazil. So they are in charge of uh, making these connections to school districts, but we don't want to restrict to the ones um, that are already part of this network. So the idea is once it, it is ready, uh, we, are, we are setting up, uh, well, this is another parallel thing. We are setting up the, the, the site that will be part of the project. And uh, there will be three entry levels for the site. We are gonna have like, a, I am a district and I want to join the project. I am, a, uh, I am a, a school principal and I want to join the project. I am a teacher who wants to join the project. Why? Because sometimes um, the teacher doesn't have the, the support from the principal or the district. And mm -hmm. sometimes uh, the, 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 the principal doesn't have the support of the district to do what he or she thinks is best for their schools. So the idea is that it's not just restricted to the whole district that wants this content. Any, any teacher will be able to get the content and, you know, just copy everything and adapt to their uh, uh, realities. It's even, uh, we are releasing it as a Creative Commons with Creative Commons license. So it's really something that anyone can use it. Hmm. Fabulous, Carla. So you're saying it's a template that could be replicated elsewhere. Is that what you're saying? It's more than, like, um, it's more than a, um, they are going to have like, um, they will have the whole uh, um, content all set up already for them, like to be used, ready to be used. They don't have to, if they don't want to adapt, they don't need to. Everything is ready for them to use as it is. But we know that teachers are very creative yeah. and uh, there is room for, if you want like to go up to, that's why we, I, I insisted uh, with the, uh, with the teachers, the designers, that we should think about learning capsules, that it's a unit in itself. It's contained in itself. Why? Because the teacher might have this content here, but around this content, he or she can build anything that they wish. Um, or no, I don't want to adapt. I want everything ready. I don't have time. I'm taking care of my kids at home but I want just to give it to my students so they do something while they are at home, which is fine. Yeah, so uh, it's all ready and it's gonna be ready like in a Google Sites that we are going to be able to copy that Google Sites for the teachers to be used the way it is or to adapt. Or through Google Classroom, uh, the developer has worked on APIs there and uh, now we can and it's something not even Google could do it but uh, the guy is really a genius um, we are going because the problem with Google Classroom is like um, there are too many things we need to know we need to invite for teachers and all that so we are not doing any of those uh, from uh, a script we are going just to get everything from uh, all the content there and deliver it to the teacher without the need to add teachers and copy rooms and all that. So also script to copy that and, and make it available. Hey. Hello. Hi, Bobby. <laughs> hey, Bobby. <laughs> and that's it, make it available to the teacher. So it's, it's more than a template lane. It's everything ready, really. 
And Carla, can we access it once it's ready? Yes, yes. Okay, will you send us the link? Yes. I'd love to look at it. We are getting there, but um, there is another point, which is revising all the material. And, I, mm -hmm. and I'm saying that now it's the, the huge challenge because it's not just revising language itself, which is also huge, but revise the, the concept of the learning experience um, to make sure like uh, it's accessible, to make sure it is um, uh, like adaptable and it's also um, right to the, to the age of the kid. All of those challenges, because we start from K1. So imagine those kids, they can't even read. Sometimes, mo many times, parents can't read. So mm -hmm. um, one thing that uh, we've been insisting on is to have like audio, lots of audio, like the teachers, mainly for the young ones, the, the very young ones, uh, like the, the, the teachers recording instructions to put on the slide or to put like to, to make it available because sometimes parents can't read. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we have videos, uh, some videos uh, in the experience, but we know that it takes a lot of bandwidth. So audio, podcasts, all that are, are much better than, than the video. So we have the video, but even if the kid can't access the video, they can still read things and, and all that. Mm -hmm. So this is... Um, uh, the main challenge now, Teresa, is revising everything in terms of what is behind, in terms of content, and in terms of language. Right. Mm -hmm. And when, when do you think you'll have it ready? Next week. Next week. Wow. What? Yes. Oh, that's a challenge. Yes. But anyway, Carla, congrats, because it's a fabulous project, or seems like a very... Fabulous project. Okay. Yes, thank you. It's yeah, great to share with you, and you know, you were all my inspiration. Yes, we wouldn't be doing that if it weren't back then in 2000 something that we started all that, and we can now uh, pay it back to all the teachers in Brazil. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And and my impression is that it's going to be, it's, it's, it's countrywide. It's something that all, okay. So, yeah, well, I mean, I, I asked you already, how are people going to access this? So um, there must be some um, portal they go through or a ministry yes. or something like that. Yes, they are going to have the portal. And then they, they say uh, they, they like have to submit like some information so that we can be in touch and then replicate the content for whoever it is, teacher, district, uh, school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and are you going to yeah. be documenting everything and getting, um, you know, having some kind of a, not exactly a research component, but an evidence-based approach so that you can say, this is what we've accomplished or these are the results and then you can tweak it or you can, yes. you know, substantiate your approach. Yes, Lane, we've been documenting day by day, in like almost like a journal. Uh, okay. We say uh, like logs with everything that we did that day, like the, all the, the academic team is doing that. And I'm sure that my, my partner, Samara, would love to have like, uh, you know, even write about that academically speaking. And, and even the results later on, we need to consider mm -hmm. Right. How we can, and, and I think this is something that we've been talking about that, how we can track what uh, teachers and schools and districts are doing with the content and how mm. it's been helping them. And I think this is something really that we really need to consider. And Lehman Foundation is also really um, evidence-based oriented. So I'm sure that we are going to be reporting everything oh, and tracking okay. everything. It's really important. So that's why we also need to have a portal to get people's information in the sense that 
can't the ones that are really using the content. Well, what is the foundation you keep mentioning, but how is it, how is it spelled? How do you write it? Lean, lean, lean one. What's the name of the project? The, the foundation. Uh, Lehman Foundation. Exactly. Yeah, Le Le Lehman. Foundation. A lot of ways to spell that. <laughs> Lehman, yes. Lehman Foundation. Ah, Lehman. okay. Okay. Yes, it's. Is that the right link? Oh, it's spelled differently in the in the website than what you put I just, there. I just googled it. I don't know it. It sounds so interesting. Well, if it's Lehman, I know that one, but it, it, you spelled it differently. Let, let me just see if I can. Yeah, what, whatever you put into the text chat, I could put in the blog post. So that's normally what I do. And I hope that's mm -hmm. okay with everybody, but just to warn you that if you put a link there, I, unless you tell me to hold it back I oh put, i see I, what you're saying I would <laughs> maybe she that. doesn't want <laughs> well i don't know no i don't know uh but you know that's my idea is with these uh we're trying to help other people in this situation so carla in in brazil mm -hmm. is in a situation where uh teaching and learning in isolation talon is yeah trying to help people around the world come together to solve this problem yes. that we all have yes. uh, collectively. So, and, and it's very interesting to us to, uh, to find out what uh, she's doing. So yeah, if you have links you can show us, that's really great. We'll, mm -hmm. But you know, we'll put them in a blog post oh. unless you tell us to hold it back. So no, it's, it's fine. I think we are almost ready to spread the word. We haven't done that in Brazil here because I think once we start, we are connected to many schools, many teachers. It's going to be crazy. And this is like the, the next step of the project, focusing on delivering the content. Now we are focusing on designing, creating, and revising everything. And... Um, Yes, uh, one thing that happened yesterday was uh, Google sent a message inviting uh, volunteers around the world, teachers, educators, to help uh, New York uh, district with the schools there because they have many multilingual uh, students that can't speak English and then the teachers can't help right. them. And then I answered saying that, well, this content will be available and for the- Oh, that's great. Uh, who did you talk the, to there? Who, who did, or did you- No, I just you, sent like, a, I just submitted in a form, but I think that's the idea for any okay. uh, Portuguese speaking country or students, yeah. we can surely get this content and put it out for anybody to use. It's it's. It's, of course, there is like some context here for Brazil in the sense that we talk about, I don't know, indigenous people uh, here in Brazil. And of course there is some content and, and in history and all that, but still they are learning. They, they, the teacher can adapt and talk about mm -hmm. Brazil and their, their own countries. How, how is it similar or different? and all kinds of situation. But I think, I, I thought it was great that maybe we can even reach out for more students, not, not just in Brazil. Huh? Anybody okay. who's speaking Portuguese can get it. And my mm -hmm. dream now, because you know, this project for me is almost over. Of course what? it isn't, but <laughs> of course it isn't, but it is, we're going to the next, yeah. You're restless. It would be to have something like that, the same framework and idea that we had to build this, to build it in English and to make it really widespread. It would be really fantastic to have a project like this that we could have like learning experiences for students in a totally different way, yeah? So. Mm -hmm. Ah, Susana, we have the same problem here in Brazil. And uh, 
uh, Susana is saying that what education authorities in Argentina are sending is really poor. We also have that here in Brazil. And we also have situations in which uh, teachers don't know what to do. So they give lots of content, 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 content. And they want to replicate what they already do in traditional classrooms. And of course, it's not working. Uh, there is a lot of um, criticism about it. But it's not about remote learning or distance learning. It, it's about the strategies. That the point, that's the point. Yeah, we know that. So this is the biggest challenge uh, to make. I, I like to think of it in terms of schema theory that we have to develop new schemata because we're going to be approaching learning and teaching in a different way. And people don't realize that. You can't just take the technology tools and plug in all of your same ways of doing things. You have to, because the tools are different and the modes of communication are different, you have to have the new schemata. Yeah, but then the, the teachers don't have it. So no. how can they do it with the, the, the kids if they don't have They're tool that? focused. They're yeah, because that's that's the only thing that they can just get their list of tools. Yeah, and then I was just saying we are uh, we are in another project with it, which is like online uh, development for teachers here in Brazil, and I have a group of around a hundred teachers, and um, we are we are you know, going through all the online learning and teaching process and all that. And in one part, they had to design a learning experience, an online learning experience for, for their kids or, you know, whoever they are teaching. And there was like a very nice lesson plan, but the teacher included, I don't know, 10, 12, uh, digital tools in one activity like they're going to do that and we'll use this and flipgrid and, and google drive and google slide and the, it won't work i said are your kids prepared for that do they have time for that do they have the infrastructure for that and you know it's it's crazy it's totally crazy so uh, that's our main mission here is to show teachers that there are other ways to do it and focus less on the tool, but more on the strategy and the learning itself. Yeah. And the connection. I think mm -hmm. it's all about connecting now. It's not about, and, and this is the main talk we had for the, the Simplifica project, which is what we are trying to do here is to connect kids to the ones that are with them at home to the ones who, uh, to, to the ones who ca they can't connect like uh, close, but like uh, digitally. So we have some activities that it says like, uh, now uh, send a WhatsApp message to your friends saying about this and that. Yeah, so this is uh, the kinds of activities that we have for them. Because here in Brazil, many plans, data plans, they don't charge for WhatsApp uh connection mm -hmm. so, whatsapp right that's the yeah. secret whatsapp yeah. yeah yeah it is in brazil it is it is huge <laughs> WhatsApp there's a lot you can do with whatsapp too i didn't yeah. realize how versatile it is yes and even more now i am using telegram now more than WhatsApp. oh i know telegram yeah it's even more it has yeah. even more options there right. and uh in WhatsApp, there is another project in Lehman Foundation that they started uh, teaching kids through WhatsApp. They they get lessons from WhatsApp there, uh, smaller ones, but uh, but uh, really uh, in nice ways. So I have a, a former student of mine has um, become very active in, in adult education and the low with low literate learners. And mm -hmm. she's developed, she took her whole class online with WhatsApp and she's using that as the way to communicate with them and teach them very basic, low, you know, they're just barely starting with English and she's building a whole program around it. It's mm -hmm. amazing what you can do. Yeah. They, they use Telegram in Europe because it, you can't get at the 
personal details of the user through that, right? Mm -hmm. So WhatsApp is a little bit, I mean, that's what they I, I don't understand what it is. Hmm? What is it? It's a text messaging app. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. a, a lot of groups, like I know political groups use it to kind of make plans and not have anybody see what they're planning, you know, kind of thing. That's what's going on here anyway. Now, if you want to preserve the identity of students, then Telegram apparently. Yeah. Yes, it's sealed off. Yes. Whereas WhatsApp is, well, they can get at each other's identities. Yeah, the, the point is that in Brazil, everybody, everybody uses WhatsApp. My mom is yeah. on WhatsApp. Everybody's <laughs> on WhatsApp. Like, uh, my mom can really connect to us. She can send us messages. She can uh, record audio. I think this is, uh, we even talk about that. Yeah. This is the most um, accessible and democratic tool nowadays in the sense that, uh, it is the first time that there is no barrier in terms of ages, in terms of, you know, uh, digital skills to connect. Um, but um, there are many people migrating to Telegram, even uh, first because of uh, data, you know, security, but also because mm -hmm. of the, the functionalities that it has. It has many more things than in, in in WhatsApp. For example, I just learned the other day that in, in Telegram, you can have like a broadcast, broadcast list together with a chat and they are connected. So the person can either just go and, and, and be part of your broadcast list. So they don't want to interact with anybody. They just want to get that content or they can, um, subscribe and also be part of a chat group that is connected to this broadcast list. So there are some interesting things, polls and, and all kinds of things that you can do on Telegram that you can't do on WhatsApp. So, mm -hmm. it, and also when you, when you enter, when you access uh, Telegram, you can see what uh, the whole Oh, you start from, you have nothing there before you, you, you access the group. So interesting points there. But uh, there are many teachers teaching nowadays through WhatsApp with their kids and connecting to families through WhatsApp. It's huge in Brazil. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I think that's it. I'll keep you posted <laughs> about this project, Good. this crazy, insane project. And hopefully it's going to be on next week. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, if you can give us any links we can yes. use to just have a look at what's going on. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. yes. We will. And congrats again, Carlinha. Great to see you, Teresa. Yeah. Susanna, uh -huh. Sus, Congrats. Lane. A genius. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I, like I said before, you the other day, you're very brave. <laughs> well, no, we because it's a leap of faith you're taking. Yeah. A leap no, of faith. And, and, Kier, and Kierkegaard. It's a leap yeah. of faith. <laughs> And we were even talking about that the other day. If we had any idea of the, you know, the, the size, the, the amount of work. <laughs> the scale, and the scale. The scale and yeah. everything. We, it's, and it's oh. also a huge responsibility. I think we didn't have mm -hmm. time to think about it. Oh, no, let me think. No, no. I yeah. said, yes, we are doing it. Yes. Yeah. And we can Go do for this it. and that. Go, yeah, yeah we can do it. And I think that's why even uh, Lehman Foundation called us because we've been partners for a while and uh, they have many big partners, big players in, in the education market and all that. But I think they knew that we would be the only crazy ones to <laughs> do it. <laughs> that's really, I mean, that's such, really cool. And it's such a short period of time because we right. have already done these kinds of projects with them, other projects. 
-hmm. And just like that, not with that scale, but uh, uh, like this, I, I need to do this in two weeks. Let's put it together. Yes, let's do it. We are going to do it. And it works. It works because we are with, uh, just like us here, the web heads. Um, there is always someone with your hands up and saying, I'm here if you need me. And, you know, you gather mm -hmm. those people, just like Vince has been doing like for decades. You gather these people and then magic happens. Yeah. I think that's the... What, what is the scale in terms of users? How many users are you anticipating? Well, <laughs> we said that in the first week, we wanted one million users. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. But I think... Um, I think it's too um, daring and I don't know, I don't think that's going to be the case, but uh, if we consider that we have 50 million students mm -hmm. uh, in public education here mm -hmm. and all that, uh, one million, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. But I wow. think like, um, I, I have no idea what's going to happen really in terms of scale in terms of who we are going to reach mm -hmm. i i'm not sure yet i can tell you like in two weeks maybe we are going to have an idea are if the any, system is not going to crash <laughs> are there any competitors are there other people trying to fill this niche well i i don't know this i don't know if if somebody has been crazy enough to try to do something like eight weeks of content for remote learning, I, I mm -hmm. not structured like that. Of course, there are some initiatives, but they are just like they put sites on and uh, some sites and then with some content there for kids, but not structured in a, in, you know, in a thoughtful way in terms of uh theory in terms of learning experiences for the kids like i i don't know that i don't know any crazy institution that has done that i don't know any other web heads in brazil besides you and your friends <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so i i put in the chat um a song that is inspirational I just learned about from one of the professors that I'm supporting. He has no clue how to teach online, so I have to hold his hand. But nice. um, he introduced that. me. I, I learned from them because I don't know their content. They're teaching different things. But it's a wonderful song about no matter whether you know it's going to have an effect or not, do it anyway. And you know, reg regardless of it, and it goes on and on. It's like a it's a folk song type of. Uh, but it's beautiful okay. with the images and it's just very inspirational to give you faith that you're not don't worry about the results don't worry about what you get back just do it anyway yeah. <laughs> and it's and great song we do i put it. the link there yeah and that's how we do it uh well yeah we didn't have much time to think about it it's a lot of responsibility um and I don't, I don't think like the, the academic team that our friends and, you know, partners, they had, I don't think they had a clue also ab about what they were getting into, but mm -hmm. they do it anyway. And, and it's an amazing team. They are working nonstop, like for two weeks, it's been crazy. We get like, we do hangouts any time of the day and the night uh, on Sunday evenings and, you know, uh, webhead style, I would say. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, so, so you're planning for eight weeks of content, but yes. we could be going, you know, like eight months. Um, well, it depends on who, which, uh, I, well, I, I think personally that the lead Trump and your leader are going to crater in the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, the reality of, they're, they're, they have, they've never gone against a virus before. And now they're, uh, you know, so it's going to take longer than eight weeks. So are you, what are you thinking about in terms of meeting that reality? Yeah. Um, we decided, uh, in fact, when Lehman Foundation, when we had the first call with Lehman Foundation, they wanted 16 weeks already. 
And then we decided that we were going to do it in two stages at least, like starting with the wait eight weeks, even to know uh, how the, the public, the audience, the users would react to the content and how they would use it. So then we could iterate the, the, the type of content that they were produce, uh, that we were producing to really match to the needs and expectations of the students and the teachers and the schools and all that. So we decided to do this in, in eight weeks right now. And then, um, but there is a chance that this is just the first stage. We don't know, mm -hmm. we don't know yet. So depending on how things, things go, maybe uh, we are gonna have a next stage of uh, more weeks and, and more learning experiences and all that and even thinking different things like uh, yesterday we were talking about there is uh, uh, some subjects that won't be taught for the for K5 I think and we were considering how to replace that subject and I was like, oh, maybe we could have like storytelling, we could have maker experience. Of course, there is some maker involved, but more focused on that. So different types of things that we are not even considering now because we haven't had time. And, um, and also, uh, if things go on like this, uh, I think there will be more uh, TV based content that we could intertwine with our projects so the kids would go they would go to channel yxz and they would watch something and based on that they would do something uh offline yeah so i don't know i don't know what's gonna happen but i wish I, I i really i was really even talking about that today that i wish i had a grant to produce more uh, mm. because it's like uh, there is so many possibilities and things that uh, you know publishers don't think uh, still like in the traditional loop and even when they try to do something else it's I don't know uh, not uh, so interesting for teachers and students so and, and the point that we can uh, really change things on the go so for example if something is not uh, we see that is not working or hasn't been accessed uh, so much we can change for other things that just go there and insert a slide and it's going to be there for the users I think this kind of flexibility that's what we need to use technology for to to make it vivid live and dynamic for the users mm -hmm. But I don't know. Eight months, it's a lot, Vance. Then I would Yeah, really. That that's really you're very well positioned. And um it, what what is your capacity at the moment? What what are you you're head of a company or how how do you is it yes. me? I'm um, I'm I'm a coordinator and uh, founder of learning together dot net. That's what I call myself. But. <laughs> Go ahead, you tell me. What yes. are you, what are you? Yeah, nowadays <laughs> I left uh, Casa Thomas Jefferson mm -hmm. three years ago. And well, my husband, he's even here. He said it was easier for me to divorce than to leave Thomas because I've been there for my whole life and I, I really loved, but it was, uh, I loved the place, but it was time to go. And uh, at that time, I, I, I already had Amplifica, which is my company now. So I am a founder. I am one of the co-founders of Amplifica, which is Amplify in English. And what we've been doing since then is really training teachers, uh, but um, trying to bring the magic for them, trying to bring the, I don't know, uh, a webhead flavor, if, uh, if I will. Uh, it's like a jinga, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like flavor. This, yes. I bring never thought this, of it as a flavor. <laughs> yes. Bring this jinga to yes. the bring these moves to the to professional development. What happened to us is three years ago, um, we we uh, Samara, my my business partner, and I planned. Um, 
a, a, a seminar. It was like a conference, a teacher's conference here in Brasilia. And we were going to do just for like the, our friends, like for 50 teachers. We said, oh, our network, they can pay, I don't know, 50 reais, which is nothing. It's like uh, $10, $10. And uh, we can do something for them, something fun, something like magic, involving, and that they can really learn something hands-on, not just like that academic conference that we have like panels and we listen and we, we don't do anything when we go back uh, to our institution. So this is when we, when we decided to have this conference and we called it Seminario uh, Amplifica, Amplifica Seminar. And um, we thought about 50 at the, in the first one we had around, uh, I don't know, more than 300 participants from all over Brazil. And then we realized that there was like a gap that we could fill in that nobody was doing in the sense of bringing this magic, bringing something fresh, something inspiring for teachers, yes? So we started from there, but it was a parallel project. It was not like a business. We were going to do just one seminar, but one seminar led to another and another, and we had more than, I think now, more than 30 seminars, like conferences wow. uh, in these three years. We had two international conferences that we could even bring. Um, we brought Alice Barr and Cheryl Oaks from the U.S. Webheads. Mm -hmm. So they came to Brazil to be one of our guest presenters. And since then, we've been doing that. Uh, first, we were focused on conferences. And uh, nowadays, we do all kinds of things like uh, online learning, online teaching and learning, designing online experiences. And many institutions hire us for that. Like uh, uh, Google is our client. We run their uh, communities. Uh, the the Google groups we run here in Brazil, Lehman Foundation, uh, Telefonica Foundation as well. So we we are this small team that can mobilize people, uh, other educators around the country when needed, and we are very agile. That's that's the main thing for us, and doing things differently, not the old, the same old thing, yes, trying to really inspire teachers. That's our main goal, and we learned that with you guys. That's mm -hmm. the point. We learned from you. Yeah, yeah we learned from, from the cat herder himself. Uh, <laughs> learn it together. This is yes. learn from learning each other. together, yeah. So that's maybe, the... um, maybe next year at EVO, you can share some of that either as part of a session or as a guest in one of the sessions or something like that. I see, Lane. I should go get back to EVO. I can see that. Hey, yes. I left it too. I, I, the last thing I did there was I got to flipped learning one started, but then mm -hmm. I got so involved in flipped learning. I couldn't do, I, it was just too much. <laughs> so yes. yeah, that's the problem with flipping. You don't know which way you're flipped. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Is, oh, is by the way, because last time I did my thing like Carla's doing today, I did the learning together on, and someone attended who then invited me to do one with Aya Teffel, a webinar for them right. on the same topic. Wow. They have a learning technologies interest group and they meet on Fridays and they invited me to come and do Yay. that same, nice. Very same nice. webinar. Someone mm -hmm. dropped by and happened to see it. So cool. I'm dying to you see know, that. No, those ripples of water. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Always like webheads, ripples of water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going for 20 years now, it's some cohesiveness there. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And, and then it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing how we can see like the you know, the cycle and where it started and now where we are heading now, it's, it, it seems that all makes sense, yes? Everything that we learned uh, with the group, with the web heads and then EVO as part of yeah. the, this ecosystem and all that, what we all learned there, we are now 
giving it back to the educational community. Yes, I think this is really amazing. And we have to include CP Square. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, I, I have to say, I've been away for all this uh, for, for such a long time, and I really thought I would never get back. When I moved from my home five years ago, I threw away, uh, what could you say, 50 huge binders of the printed uh, material, 50 binders, that is uh, six shelf meters that I just mm -hmm. threw away. I skipped it. I, I said, I will never go back to all this. I'm doing other things. I'm a granny. I'm retired. I, uh, I'm a dancer. I'm, I'm doing a lot of things, but uh, not online. But now here, here you are. I'm back. <laughs> I'm Good for you, sis. And I have my ears open. Just wait and see. Just mm -hmm. like me, Suze, I, I've been, well, I've been part of this gang, I don't know for how long, but uh, for some time, and even when I left uh, Casa Thomas Jefferson, it was like a, a huge uh, turn around for me, turning point as well, and I thought I was kind of disconnected from everything that it was like my past life, and here I am back, and happy to connect to all of you and of course I had been following everyone but uh, not very actively but I think I'm that's I'm exciting. really surprised the way it's all come back together because yes. uh, no. well, I've, I've no, sort of no. carried it on to other areas but this yes. one has just well, kind of come back it's I really think nice. it's like there's a, a center and people fly in and out around it Mm -hmm. and keep spinning and people mm -hmm. spin out and spin back in. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the you metaphor know, when, is. The gravitational when, pull. Uh, <laughs> you, when you are the gravitational pull. I know about that. It's a gravitational pull. It's not me. It's it's just, you know, that's like you say, all these things are in their own motion and they just kind of yes. gravitate back or whatever, you know, Something whatever like is going. That. Yeah, it's hard for me when I try and explain it to people. They, it's hard for them to understand it. But yeah, definitely, it's real. Well, anyway, it's really nice to see you okay. people again, and uh, and especially Carla and and the interesting things you're doing. And I I misspoke earlier. This is Learning Together episode four five two, as it turns out. Yeah, four five two. That's right. Yeah. So. Uh, and this is, uh, what, the 21st of April already, and right. here we are, learning together and Talon, turning, uh, teaching and learning in isolation, well, something I started, and, uh, well, you all mills together. It's basically web heads and learning together, and it all <laughs> melds into one. So, nice to see everybody, and... Uh, I'll, I'll stop the recording shortly. If anybody has any last words to say, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for, you know, all the connections, everything I learned. I'm paying back to everyone here in Brazil. And that's it. That's the good thing about communities, right? Thank you, Vance and everyone. Thank you, Carla, for, Thanks, the, Carla. for talking this about your, the Thanks. project. Which is fabulous. Okay. Yes, yep. I'm, I'm okay. ready for next chapter. Bye. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye bye.